In this project, we will be coding a single operator calculator. The functionality of the calculator will include adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing two numbers, updating the screen with custom messages in case of invalid calculations such as zero divided by zero, clearing the calculator screen, adding decimals, and coding in a backspace key to delete the last character on the calculator screen. This will be a hands-on project and you will code the functions for this calculator from scratch. Some of the topics introduced in this project are global and local variables, booleans, comparison and equality operators, DOM methods and properties, string methods and properties, and others. With that, let's go ahead and start a calculator project. Let's go over the HTML and CSS portions of the calculator before we begin our project. In the course assets, we have index.html and opening up the CSS folder, we've put custom styles in the style.css file. And lastly, open up the JS folder and you see a file called main.js. And this is where we will be putting in our code. Okay, let's go ahead and open up all these files in a have a div with a class of header that contains an h1 heading that says JavaScript calculator, followed by the closing tag for the header div. And this is the he header div on the page with the heading. Moving on, we have a container with a class of container and the ID of calculator. This is the div within which everything else will be contained. Then we have an opening and closing div with class of row within which there is a div with class column medium 12 display and the ID display. This is where our results will be displayed on the page. The div with class row underneath this again has a div with class column medium 12 and this div contains the clear and delete buttons that you see on the web page right here. And below the closing tag for the delete and clear button div we have another div with class equal to row. Now this row has four column medium 12 divs within which we place four buttons each. The buttons with numbers have a class of num button, whereas the buttons with operators have a class called op, as you see in our HTML. Each one of these buttons has an onClick event attribute whose value is a function, and we will go into this in the JavaScript portion of our project. And we finish off with the closing tags for the div that contain our number and operator buttons, Lastly, followed by the closing tag for the main calculator div. Now let's go over a CSS. And coming to our style.css file, you see I've included a comment here that says style notes. And below this we have our font, body, main calculator container, display, clear and delete button styles. And lastly, we have our styles for our numbers and other buttons. Okay, this finishes the overview of our HTML and CSS. So let's carry on. Now we will be discussing key concepts before actually coding. The discussion of these concepts is contextual and relates directly to our project. And let's start off by discussing variables. Variables are a reference to some value in memory. Think of them as named boxes in which you can store data. These boxes can hold various data types such as strings, booleans, numbers, arrays, and objects. We will discuss data types shortly. Let's only talk about variables right now. The purpose of creating variables is for storing a reference to some data which you might want to work with later on. And how do we create variables? This brings us to the next point. There are three stages in creating a variable. Declaration, initialization, and assignment. Variables are declared with the var keyword followed by the variable name and a semicolon to denote a statement end. For example, var first name. 
The variable first name can then be called inside your application to access the data inside it. Declared variables are automatically initialized as some space in memory by the JavaScript engine, and this is what I meant by the statement variables are a reference to some value in memory. Initialized variables are then assigned a value by using the equal to sign. For example, first name is equal to the name Lara. Now, once a variable is declared, you don't need to use the var keyword again when using it, as you can see in the assignment stage. We will be declaring, initializing, and assigning a value to a variable all in one statement like so. var first name is equal to Lara and a semicolon. Now, there are a few naming conventions, such as a variable name can only contain letters, numbers, as long as the number is not the first character of the variable name, a dollar sign, and an underscore. The naming convention and style that we will be following for variables is camel case. As you can see in the variable first name, wherein the first word is all in lower case, and after that, the first letter of the second word, which is last, is in uppercase. Similarly, in bar street house number, each succeeding word after street has the first character of a word in uppercase. Camel case makes things easier to read. Now, there are a few restricted keywords that you can't name your variable with, such as var false amongst others. So you can't have a variable called a var var. It's good practice to give your variable a name which is relevant to its purpose, and this is what we'll stick to. So let's discuss another concept related to variables, which will become intuitive to you once we start coding. Any variables declared outside of a function are called global variables and have what is called global scope. And what this means is that these variables can be accessed by all functions in your script. Whereas the variables declared within a function are called local variables. They have local scope as these variables can only be used within a function inside which they are defined, hence the name local. They cannot be used by any other functions in your script. Now, if this is your first time encountering variables, don't worry. When we start using them in our projects, you will understand them better as components of a whole machine, including their scope. And with that, let's move on to discuss data types. As I've mentioned before, JavaScript variables can hold data which can be of different types. A data type specifies what type of data a variable holds. So is it someone's first name, a number, or maybe a boolean? JavaScript is a dynamic or loosely typed language, and this means that a variable can hold a data type at one point in your program and then another type at a later point if you assign another data type to the same variable. It will now hold the newly assigned data type. So let's take an example. Var first name could reference a value that is someone's first name, such as Lara, and then you could simply decide to reassign the number 10 to first name, and now it will hold the number 10. So it's important to know what data types there are and how they behave, as it will allow you to work with them better. There are six primitive data types, and I will briefly talk about these as we will be using them. The string data type is composed of a sequence of characters enclosed within quotation marks. These can be double or single quotation marks. Which one you choose to use is just a matter of preference. The only rule is that an opening quotation mark must have a closing quotation mark. For example, var first name is equal to Lara. The variable first name references a value which is of the string data type. The same way var number is equal to the number 6 is also a string. It is not of the number type simply because it is enclosed within quotation marks. And we'll talk about the number data type coming up. You can also have empty strings such as var num1 is equal to an empty string. 
The empty string indicates that var num1 references a string data type which has both a value and type. Its type is string and the value is simply the empty space between the quotation marks. And with that, let's go on and move to the number data type. Numbers are enclosed without quotation marks and they are numeric values. These can be integers, real numbers, float, hexadecimals, octal, or exponential values. So, for example, var num1 is equal to 10. Notice how it isn't enclosed within quotation marks, just like a string would be. We will be using Boolean quite a bit, so let's briefly discuss that. A Boolean data type can only represent two values, either true or false. True is represented by the number 1 and false as the number 0. Think of a Boolean as an on and off switch, or simply as representing yes or no. You can assign the Boolean data type to a variable, for example, var unicorns is equal to false. Variables assigned a Boolean value, as will be in our calculator, are quite useful as they are commonly used to represent the results of a comparison, such as less than, greater than, or equal to. Additionally, they are also useful for representing the presence or absence of a value. And as such, they are used in controlling code flow using if and else loops, while loops, and other conditional statements. Now, you don't have to memorize any of this. When we use them in our project, you'll understand the usefulness of the true and false state of a Boolean variable in conditional statements. For now, let's just have a look at some pseudocode as an example of controlling code flow by the use of a Boolean value. So, if the statement 10 is greater than 5 is true, then we want to alert greater than, else we will alert not greater than. Moving on, let's keep in mind that JavaScript treats an empty string, the number 0, undefined and null values as false. Everything else is true. And with that, let's move on to null and undefined types. Null and undefined data types can be a bit confusing, but don't worry and get hung up on these. As you use them, their usefulness will become clearer to you. Now, in JavaScript, null represents the absence of a value. That is, null refers to nothing. This can be a bit confusing, so take for example the English word nothing, which refers to the absence of something. If someone were to ask you what's in an empty box, you might say nothing. Similarly, the null data type is assigned as a value to a variable to represent no value. Take for example var unicorn is equal to null. In this example, the variable unicorn has intentionally been assigned the value null. And as I mentioned that the assignment of the value null to a variable represents nothing, as it is a data type that is actually not of any value. And with this, let's discuss what the undefined data type means. A variable which has been defined but not as yet assigned a value will be given the data type of undefined. For example, var operator. The variable operator has been declared but has no value as yet. Take for example someone asking you what's for dinner and you might reply with undecided and this means that you will have dinner but what you will eat is undefined as yet. You can also intentionally assign the undefined keyword to a variable to indicate an undefined value such as var operator is equal to undefined. Now, you might be a bit confused about the difference between the null and undefined types. So let's talk about that. Undefined is automatically set to a variable that has not been assigned a value as yet. You can also intentionally assign undefined to a variable. The undefined data type has a value of, well, as the name suggests, undefined whereas null must be assigned by you intentionally to a variable. And the null data type is actually nothing, as the null keyword represents the absence of any value. 
And lastly, let's talk about symbol. Symbol is a new primitive data type and we won't talk about it in detail. It extends the functionality of objects and we will leave it at that since we won't be using it in any of our projects. So we've discussed all these data types. In case you are ever confused on what data type a particular value is, you can use a type of. Type of is an operator that will return the data type of an operand. An operand, by the way, is defined as the thing that is being operated upon. Its syntax is as follows. The keyword type of followed by the operand. That is the thing you want to find the data type of. And here you can see various examples of data types and the console log of the type for each. And I'll have a look at the last one. The null data type has a special type of operator called type of null, which if equal to null will console log to well null. So if you want to find out if a data type is null, you should use type of null to do so instead of just type of. Moving on, let's talk about the last topic, which is the document.getElementById method. GetElementById is a method of the document object. Its purpose is to fetch the reference to an element with a particular ID on a web page. This method takes an element ID as an argument within quotes and inside brackets. And we use the dot notation to call get element by ID on the document object. This is a useful method as we can then store the reference to that particular element in our DOM in a variable. And then we can simply manipulate the element, for example, changing its background color, adding some new text and so on. For example, we've stored the reference to a div with the ID of my div in a variable conveniently called, well, my div. And with this, let's go ahead and declare some variables of our own that we will use for our calculator. Now, let's start coding in some functionality to our calculator with JavaScript. So open up your main.js file in a code editor. And let's first declare a few global variables. And as I mentioned before, global variables are outside of a function and may be accessed by any of the functions in a script. So all variables that we declare now can be used by any of the functions in our code. So declare var num1 and assign its value as an empty string. And similarly, let's declare var num2 and assign its value to an empty string as well. We will use var num1 to refer to the number or numbers prior to clicking an operator button, whereas var num2 refers to the number post clicking an operator button. Now, Declare var operator and we will come to this in our operator function and assign its value there. For now, leave it as undefined. And let's declare var flag and set it to the boolean zero or false. Flag will track off whether an operator button has been clicked through its true or false state. So if an operator button like the add button has been clicked, then a flag will be assigned the value of true or one. Its default value is false when no operator button has been clicked. Moving on, declare var display, which refers to the div node with the ID of display in our HTML using the document dot get element by ID DOM method. As I mentioned earlier, you can use a particular DOM node by storing a reference to the node in a variable with document dot get element by ID. And this is the div in which our input will be displayed when we click on buttons. This area right here. And lastly, declare var equal to, which is a boolean initially set to zero or false. The true false state of equal to will be used to reset the display for a new calculation. And this takes care of the first part of our project. Let's carry on and start coding our first function. Before we code our first function in the series, let's briefly go over a few more concepts that we will use. The first one being functions. 
functions are central to writing code. They are reusable blocks of code that automate tasks. Have a look at the anatomy of a function. A function is declared with the function keyword followed by the name of the function. Then we have open and close brackets which may or may not have one or more arguments within them. An argument is an input to the function. It's the variable, number or any value that we want the code within the function to manipulate. We then have opening and closing curly braces. Inside the curly braces is where we put our statements containing the function logic. The statements are separated by a semicolon. Think of the semicolon in JavaScript as a period in English that separates sentences. We then call our function by typing in the function name and opening and closing brackets inside which there may be one or more arguments and followed by a semicolon. This is termed calling a function and we call a function to execute the code within the function. In our example here, we have a function called international number, which takes an argument called number. And inside the function, we have declared a local variable called var international code. Var international code is assigned a value consisting of the result of the concatenation of the string number one to the input of our function is simply called number, which is also a string data type, therefore alerting the complete international dialing code. Okay, so let's call our function. And we call our function with the function name and pass the variable my number as the input to the function. The variable my number is the argument to the function when calling it the same way number is in the function declaration. And this then alerts the existing phone number with the number one before it. And now let's have a brief look at the onClick event attribute, which is related to our discussion of functions. OnClick is an HTML attribute. Attributes define the characteristics of an HTML element and have name value pairs. The name refers to the attribute such as class or ID and the value is simply the name you want to give your class or ID. For example, in our HTML, the number buttons have a class of num-button. As another example, think of the style attribute with a value that sets the color to white, as you can see within the opening p tag in our example. And relevant to our discussion of functions, here is another example. The attribute name here is onClick, and the value is the function alert message within quotes followed by a semicolon, just as we would call a function in our main.js file. The attribute is attached to the button element in the HTML file. The onClick event will trigger a function that will be executed when the button is clicked. In this example here, it executes the alert message function. We will attach onClick attributes to our calculator buttons in our HTML as we want specific functions to execute when its corresponding button is clicked. All right. Let's move on to if and else conditional statements. Conditional statements are used to evaluate conditions such as true or false statements and then execute certain code depending on the fulfillment of that condition, hence the name conditional statements. An if statement contains the condition within brackets and the block of code to run within the curly braces. An if else conditional statement contains the extra else part if the condition is unfulfilled, then an alternative block of code enclosed within the else curly braces will execute. We will write a couple of these in our project. Pay attention to the structure for now. And now let's talk about comparison operators. Comparison operators are used to compare two values. What you see on the screen is a strict equality comparison operator, and it will compare whether two operands, such as variables, are of equal type and value. For example, when comparing var number and var num, the result is false because var number references the number data type, whereas var num references a string data type, even though the value of both is 8. And we'll come to this in our function. Just keep this in mind that the strict equality comparison operator compares both the data type and the value of two variables. And now let's talk about the addition assignment operator. 
This will add a value to the existing value of a variable. For example, take var x, which references a value which is of the number data type. The addition assignment operator has added the number 5 to the existing value of 10. And if we console log x, you will see that its value is now 15. Now, if two values are of different types, for example, a string and number, then the addition assignment operator will concatenate the two values as a string data type. And we see that in our example here. Var day is assigned the value number 10. The addition assignment operator concatenates the word Tuesday to the number 10. And the result is a string 10 Tuesday. Notice to add a space between 10 and Tuesday, you must leave a space before the word Tuesday in between the quotation marks. And this is because the space between quotation marks does count as a space, even though JavaScript tends to ignore white space otherwise. Moving on, let's talk about the DOM set inner HTML property. So what is the inner HTML property? Inner HTML is the text that occurs between an element's opening and closing a tag. For example, in the following p tag, hello world is the inner HTML between the opening and closing p tags. The inner HTML property allows you to add or modify the text content of an element. So in order to use the inner HTML property, we need to first access the element whose text content we wish to modify. And we do that with the DOM get element by ID method that we've talked about. And once we've stored the reference to that element in a variable, we can simply access the inner HTML property of that variable with the dot notation, like we see in var text, which references the string hello world. And in order to change the text of the p tag, we could simply access the inner HTML property of var text and assign it some new text, such as hello earthlings with the equal to operator. Now, if you need some time for this to sink in, take a few minutes. If not, let's move on and talk about logical operators next. We talked about Boolean data types, which represent true or false values. In our calculator project, var operator and equal to are initially set to the Boolean false. Now, in order to evaluate Boolean true and false values, we need what are called logical operators. The pair of symbols you see here are logical operators. The first one stands for AND, whereas the second one stands for OR. These are normally used within if and else conditional statements to evaluate if one or more statements is true or false. Take for example the following statements. The if conditional evaluates whether or not it is true that both x and y are strictly equal to 2 and 4. If the left operand evaluates false, that is, if x strictly equal to 2 is false, then it will not evaluate the right operand and instead return false for the statement. But if the left operand evaluates true, the right operand must be evaluated. That is, if x is strictly equal to 2 is true, then it will evaluate if y is strictly equal to 4. And if both are true, then alert the statement even numbers present. In contrast, take the second example. In this case, the conditional evaluates to true if either x or y is 2 or 4. The AND logical operator will evaluate to true if both operands are true, whereas the OR operator will evaluate to true if either one of the operands is true. And we will use these in our project as well. With that, let's go ahead and discuss the last topic before we move on to writing some code. We already talked about the string data type, which consists of a sequence of characters enclosed within quotation marks. Now, in JavaScript, strings can also be treated as a type of object, which can have properties and methods associated with them. I won't get into the nitty gritty of that because it'll detract from the practical experience of actually using them. So the takeaway message is that a string has properties such as its length and methods which allow you to do something with a string, say slice a string into two with the slice method. The length property of a string will return its length starting from the number one onwards till the last character of the string. For example, take var name is equal to rover. We access the length property of the string object with the dot notation, such as name dot length. 
the dot notation provides access to an object's property. In our case, the length property of a string object referenced by the var name. And this will return the number 5. Okay, so that's that. And now let's go ahead and use this in our first function, which is called a set value. Now have a look at the div with the ID of numbers row. And you see that all the buttons with class and num button have an on click attribute whose value is the set value function. This function is called when a number button is clicked. And in the set value function, a number is passed as an argument to the function within brackets. This input number corresponds to the number button being clicked. So the number 5 button has an on click event attribute whose value is the set value function, which has the number 5 passed to it as an argument. So let's have a look at index.html in the browser. And as you see, our calculator does nothing when we click on any of the number buttons. And we will work on that right now. So let's head back to our main.js file. Right. Now let's declare a function with function set value. And as you can see, the function takes an argument called number. Number is the input to the function, and the input to this function will be the number in the argument of the onClick function, as we saw above in our HTML file, for example, the number 5. What we want to do in this function is to assign the numbers that we click on to either var num1 or var num2. Okay, so let's structure an if-else block as such. Now, within the if conditional, let's put our condition, which is flag strictly equal to zero, that is false. And if this condition evaluates to true, let's code in what we want to do. So type num1 plus equal to number. Okay, let's go over what's happening here. Now, if you remember, var flag is initially set to the boolean false, and it keeps track of whether an operator button has been clicked. If a flag is strictly equal to false, then an operator button has not been clicked. Therefore, the function will assign the input number to var num1 using an addition assignment operator. And let's alert var num1 to see what we have till now. And coming to index.html again in our browser, you can see that when I click on a button, we get alerted num1, which has the value of the number that we clicked on. Now, let's work on one last thing. That is, we want to update our display div to show the value of the number buttons being clicked. And we will use inner HTML for that. So head back to main.js. And within the if block type display dot inner HTML plus equal to number. We use the addition assignment operator as remember var num1 and var num2 are assigned the string data type. Therefore, we aren't adding any numbers. Hence, we want the numbers before an operator button is clicked to be stringed together to represent var num1. Okay, let's go ahead and try this out. And as you can see, when I click on the number buttons, they are not being added to each other. Instead, we are concatenating to the var num1 string, which was an empty string in a global variable set. Okay, now what if a var flag is equal to true? That is, what if an operator button has been clicked? Then what do we do with the numbers being clicked? And the else part of the if else block will take care of this. So if the if conditional is false, that is, if var flag is strictly equal to true, that is an operator button has been clicked, then the function will assign the input passed in the function to var num2. So in the else block type in num2 plus equal to number 
and display dot inner HTML plus equal to number. All right, now let's finish up with two last things. First, let's limit the amount of digits that can be entered. This will prevent digits from overflowing in the display div. So structure an if block just before the closing brace for the function. And within the if conditional, let's type in num1 dot length greater than 10 or num2 dot length greater than 10. And if this if condition is true, then display dot inner HTML is equal to the string max limit of digits reached. Now the length property of a string determines if the length of num1 or num2 is greater than 10. So if either var num1 or num2 exceeds 10 characters, then set the inner HTML to the string max limit of digits reached. Now come up to the beginning of the function. We'll be finishing this function by another if conditional statement, which will call a function that we will code later on. So structure your if block like so. And within the brackets, put in your condition, which is equal to, strictly equal to one or true. This checks whether the equal to button has been clicked. That is, if var equal to is strictly equal to true. And if so, then we want to do the following. Clear button, open brackets, close brackets, and a semicolon. So we call the clear function from within the set value function if the equal to sign has been clicked. And don't worry about this. We will come to it later on. Just keep in mind that if the equal to button has been clicked and a result is displayed in the display div, then afterwards, if a number button is clicked, we want to clear the display before starting a new calculation. And congratulations, you have coded the first function in this series. And if this is the first time that you're ever coding a function, good job. Before we start our next function, let's briefly discuss a few topics that we'll be using in our function. And let's start off with local variables. I briefly mentioned local and global variables earlier on. And to reiterate, local variables are within a function and are only accessible to the function within which they are declared and have what is called local scope. And let's have a look at a very simple example. In our example, var dog is a global variable which will be available to all functions in our script. And in this case, it is available to function foo. Therefore, when we alert the variable dog in the foo function and later on call foo right here, it will alert the string boxer. However, notice that we have another variable within the function called cat, whose value is the string tabby cat. Now, when I alert cat outside the function below where we have called foo, it returns an error and there is no alert message saying tabby cat. And this is because variables within functions are local variables and have local scope. Local variables are deleted once the function is executed. And let's move on to discuss if, else if, else conditional statements. We've coded an if else block and this one is not very much different. If the condition in the if statement is false, then the condition in the else if conditional statement is tested. And if that's false, we can check another else if conditional statement and so on. If all are false, then the code in the else block is executed. And with that, let's discuss calling a function from within a function. 
Now, you can call a function from within another function, and this is useful because you can control when and under what set of conditions a function is called after it has been declared. Now, this is a simplistic example, but it demonstrates what is meant by calling a function from within a function. Here, function a and b are both declared and then called from within function a, b, and function a, b is called as a standalone function on a separate statement. Notice that we called the clear button function from within the set value function earlier on. And now let's discuss the last topic. So you can join together strings with the addition operator. The addition operator does string concatenation. And in the example you see, var full message is composed of var hello plus var world. Therefore, we've concatenated two variables. However, there is a no space between the words hello and world in a var full message. So we've fixed that in var full message with space, wherein we've concatenated an empty string with the addition operator to provide white space between the two words, hello and world. Now remember we went over concatenation with the additional assignment operator as well. So with this, let's go on to code our opclick function. Now, as you can see, when I click on an operator button, such as a 44 plus 22, the plus sign is not displayed, and there is no distinction between the set of numbers that belong to num1 and num2. The opclick function We'll take care of that. Now, in our HTML, if you see within the div with ID of numbers row, we have buttons with class set to op and an onclick event function set to opclick. The opclick function takes one argument between numbers 1 to 4. The numbers are assigned to each one of the operators. So, for example, in the opclick function, you see 4 as an argument to the function. 4 is the number that I assigned to the division sign. Similarly, we see opclick here with 3 as the argument to the function. And 3 is the number I assigned to represent the multiplication sign. Numbers 1 and 2 have been assigned to the minus and addition operators. I've used numbers for simplicity's sake, but you could have just used a string or any value permissible in the argument of a function. So let's go over to main.js. And now let's declare a function. Function op click and in between brackets, numeric code and open and close curly braces. Okay, first let's set the value of the global operator variable to numeric code. So operator is equal to numeric code. Numeric code is the input of the function and refers to numbers between one to four as we just saw in our HTML file. Now let's declare and initialize a local variable var op string to an empty string. Op string will hold the string equivalent of the input, that is the numeric code that we've assigned to our operators. So if the input passed is a number 4, then op string will be a string containing the division sign. Lastly, change the global flag variable to the boolean true to denote that an operator button has been clicked. The whole point of the opclick function is to add the operator to the display div and track the state of the operator click with var flag. So let's work on that with an if else if else block. So let's structure the block like so. And within the if brackets, put the condition operator strictly equal to 4. Therefore, the conditional statement will check whether 
var operator is strictly the same as the input passed to the function, that is the number 4. If the condition is true, then update the display div to concatenate the string equivalent of the numeric code associated with an operator button which is a division sign. So display dot inner HTML plus equal to and within quotation marks a division sign. We use the addition assignment operator as remember var enum1 comes before the operator in the display div and then set the op string value to be a string denoting the division sign. So op string is equal to and within quotation marks the division sign. Moving on in our else if condition type in the second condition operator strictly equal to 3 and if this evaluates to true then we want to do the following display dot inner html class equal to and within quotation marks the multiplication sign and the same for op string. So op string equal to and within quotation marks a multiplication sign. So let's do the same for the subtraction sign with operator strictly equal to 2 then display dot inner html plus equal to the subtraction sign and op string is equal to the subtraction sign within quotation marks and now the only operator remaining is the addition sign so if the operator button clicked isn't any of the above then it must be an addition sign which is why we don't need to put in a condition in the else block okay so finishing this off with display dot inner html plus equal to the plus sign and then the string same for op string okay so let's head over to index.html in our browser now if you notice we can click an operator sign multiple times so let's fix this and head back to the main.js file now after the else block let's put in an if block like so if flag is strictly equal to true then display dot inner html is equal to num1 plus op string this prevents an operator from being displayed more than once even though it may be clicked a couple of times and this is because we are not concatenating op string string to the display div when a flag is true that is an operator has been clicked instead we are simply using the equal to assignment operator to show only num1 plus op string great now let's try this out And now if you see there is no multiple display of the operator button but we can start a calculation with an operator. So let's prevent starting a calculation with an operator and head back to the main.js file. And now type in if flag is strictly equal to true and num1 is strictly equal to an empty string then 
call the clear button function. So if flag is equal to true, that is an operator has been clicked and var num1 is an empty string, which means there is no number assigned to var num1, then we will call the clear function from within our opclick function. The clear function will reset all variables to their default values and we'll come to that soon. And moving on, we have one last thing to finish up with. So let's take care of a user story. A user might click on an operator button after the equal to button has been clicked. And in such a case, we will simply clear the screen with the clear button function. So type in in another if conditional statement. If equal to is strictly equal to true, then call the clear button function. And this finishes the op click function. So far, we've determined the values to assign to num1 and num2 based on whether they are pre or post op click in our set value function. And we've also assigned the correct op operator sign within strings to the inner HTML of the display div in the op click function. So now let's move on to the equal click function, which will evaluate calculations. All right, we're moving on in our calculator project. We will discuss a few more concepts before coding. Remember, this is contextual and is related to the project. So if you feel like at any point taking a break to read deeper into a topic, do so. With that, let's discuss what we see here on the screen, starting off with parse float. Parse float is an inbuilt JavaScript function that takes a string as an argument. It will parse a string and return it as a floating point number. Parse float looks at each character starting at position 0 and it continues to convert the string into a number. However, if it cannot convert the first string into a number, it will return NAN which stands for not a number. And we'll discuss this in a bit. Have a look at our examples here on the screen. And moving on, let's talk about the two fixed method. This will take a number as an argument which represents the number of decimal places to include in a number. It will return a string representation of the number object after the number of decimal places has been fixed. For example, var num is equal to the number 110.345, etc. Applying the two fixed method on num by taking two decimal places as the argument will return 110.34. And moving on to nan, this stands for not a number. It represents a value which is not a number, like we saw earlier on in parse float and the string a123 which returned nan. As the parse float method could not parse the string correctly due to the presence of the letter a. nan is the only JavaScript function that is not equal to itself and since it's not equal to itself the only way of detecting it is with a built-in function called isNAN which takes nan as an argument like you can see on here. And this will return true, indicating the presence of NAN. And that's all for NAN. We won't need to go into the quirky bits. Okay, now let's discuss the switch statement, which can be used in place of if, else if statements. The switch conditional statement begins with the word switch, and within brackets contains the expression that you would like to evaluate. And then what follows is a series of cases. If the value of a case matches that of the expression, then the associated block of code is executed. The break keyword ends the block in case there is a match and exits out of the switch statement. Now, if there is no match, then the code in the default block runs and default block is optional. This will become more intuitive to you as we use it. So pay attention to the structure for now and let's move on. 
so this is where we are right now and by clicking on the equal to button you will notice that nothing happens as yet so let's work on that the equal click function handles addition subtraction multiplication or division of two operands that is num1 and num2 depending on the mathematical operator clicked and head to main.js and declare the equal click function so function equal click and open and close brackets and open and close curly braces and within the curly braces let's type in if equal to button has been clicked then set a var equal to the boolean true and use the parse float function to parse global variable num1 to convert the string into a floating point number similarly use the parse float function to parse global variable num2 to convert the string into a floating point number as well and set local variable result to an empty string var result will hold the result of the calculation and set local var rounded result to an empty string as well this will reference the result rounded off to four decimal places now we want to check the value of our global operator variable that is if it's an addition multiplication subtraction or division sign and then based on the value of the operator variable we want to perform a calculation on num1 and num2 and remember in our op click function up here we assigned the global operator variable the value of the numeric code associated with the operator button clicked so that is available to the equal click function instead of an if else if else block we will use the switch statement and the switch statement performs a different set of actions for different conditions so let's code this bit switch and within brackets true open curly braces and close curly braces and now type in the case within brackets operator is strictly equal to one then var result is equal to num1 plus num2 and then break followed by a semicolon and the second case is case operator strictly equal to 2 then var result is equal to num1 minus num2 followed by break moving on case operator strictly equal to 3 then result is equal to num1 multiplied by num2 and break finally case operator strictly equal to 4 then var result is equal to num1 divided by num2 each case is compared to the expression within the brackets after switch and if the case matches then the code block is executed switch true is the expression against which all cases will be compared now we need to store the result of the calculation rounded off so rounded result is equal to result dot two fixed 
and within brackets the number 4. Toofixed is a method that converts a number into a string, keeping the specified amount of decimal places, and in this case, a four decimal places. So we call the toofixed method on result and assign its reference to var rounded result. Moving on, display dot inner HTML is equal to rounded result. And this updates the display div when the equal to button is clicked by displaying the rounded result with the inner HTML property. So let's go ahead and try this out. And 10 plus 10 equal to. Okay, so till now we can perform a single calculation as the clear button doesn't do anything. So you can't clear and reset to perform another calculation. But before we move on to that, consider what happens if you try to calculate something like a zero divided by zero. And in the display, what you get is NAN, which stands for not a number. So come back to main.js and let's fix that with a if conditional statement. And come to right above where the closing curly brace for the function is. So if rounded result is strictly equal to the string nan, then display dot inner HTML is equal to not a valid calculation. Okay, let's try this again and divide a zero by zero. And there you go, the inner HTML of the display div has been updated. And with that, let's go ahead and take care of the clear function, which we've called both in set value and op click functions. The clear button function is attached to the on click event for the clear button. It is also called from within the set value function when we want to set both of our num1 and num2 to their default values of an empty string each. For a second round of calculations, if the equal to button has been clicked. We also call the clear button function from within the op click function to prevent starting a calculation with an operator button. And also if the equal to button is clicked and flag is true, then we want to call on the clear button function and reset everything. This is an easy function as all we are doing is setting the values of our global variables to their default states before a calculation. Okay, so declare your function with function clear button and then open and close brackets followed by open and close curly braces and within the function declaration let's reset our global variables to their initial states like so num1 is equal to an empty string num2 is equal to an empty string as well and then flag is equal to false display dot inner HTML is equal to an empty string. This is the only new addition out here which is different from our global variable set before the set value function. This will clear the display div by setting the inner HTML to an empty string. And lastly, equal to is equal to false. And let's go ahead and try this out. So, and then let's click on the clear button. And great, that's working just fine. So let's move on to our next function, which is for this delete button here, which will delete the last number or operator like the backspace key on your keyboard. 
If you notice when I click on the delete button, it doesn't do anything. The backspace on click event function in our HTML is attached to this delete button here. Now we're going to code our backspace function and the basic functionality will be to delete the last character of a string. For example, we might want to delete the last character in the num1 string when the delete button is clicked. And now head over to main.js and as usual declare your function called backspace and this function will have two local variables var temp1 and var temp2 which are references to an empty string each now let's start off by calling the clear button function if equal to is strictly equal to true and the delete button is clicked so within an if conditional statement, if equal to is strictly equal to true, then call the clear button function. And this is because if a calculation has been performed and the result is in the display div when the delete button is clicked, the delete button should simply clear away the result instead of delete the, deleting the last number in the result string. And let's try this out. And opening index.html in the browser, you see that after I click on the delete button, it clears the display div.
the set decimal function which as the name implies will set the decimal point in num1 and num2. This function is the value for the onclick attribute of the decimal button. Let's declare our function with a function set decimal and structure it. Now we want to set the decimal point for num1 and num2 if the decimal button is clicked. And as we've come to know, num1 refers to the number before an operator and num2 refers to the number post operator. And both these states are referenced by the global flag variable. So set up an if statement and within the if statement, put in your condition for when flag is strictly equal to false. We will nest two other if statements within this. So if flag is strictly equal to false evaluates to true, then we want to check two more conditions. So let's work on the first and structure another if conditional statement like so. And within brackets, let's put in the condition which is if num1 is strictly equal to an empty string, then num1 is equal to the string 0 point and display dot inner HTML is equal to num1. So what happens if you click on the decimal point button when num1 is an empty string and has no numbers? Then we want to add a leading zero, for example, 0 0.6, and we want that change to be reflected in the display div. And let's check this out. And when I click on the decimal point first, there is a leading zero. Now let's work on our second if statement and structure it. And type in if num1 dot index of a decimal point is strictly equal to minus one. Like I mentioned before, the index of string method finds the first occurrence of a character in a string. Index of will return minus one if the character searched for does not exist, as index starts at position zero. And if there is no existing decimal point, then concatenate a decimal point to num1 with an addition assignment operator with num1 plus equal to and within quotation marks, the decimal point. And update display dot inner HTML. The index of a method will also prevent the adding of multiple decimal points within num1 as it will first search for the presence of a decimal point. And now let's try this out. Okay, everything seems to be working fine, so head back to main.js. And now let's do the same for num2 when flag is set to the boolean true. And within another if conditional, let's put our first if statement, which checks if num2 is an empty string when the set dec decimal function is called. So if num2 is strictly equal to an empty string num2 is equal to the string zero point and display dot inner html plus equal to num2 and like before, we've updated display.innerHTML if the condition is true. 
Now let's put our second if conditional using the index of method on num2 like before as well. And what this does is that it inserts a decimal point in num2 if no decimal is found when the set decimal function is called and num2 isn't an empty string. And display.innerHTML displays a num1, the operator, as well as a num2. And like as in our backspace function, we need to use an if else if else loop to determine the numeric value of the operator and update display.innerHTML with the corresponding string value. So I'm going to go ahead and paste this part from the backspace function within the second if for num2. And instead of temp2, we now have display.innerHTML updated to display num1, the operator, and num2. Okay, let's try this out. And great. This finishes our first project in the series. We now have a functioning single operator calculator. Now, we can do one small last thing before moving on, and this will demonstrate the reusability of blocks of code we call functions. Now, notice how we've been using an if, else if, else block to determine the numeric value of the operator argument in op click, and then updating the inner HTML with the corresponding string. If you go up to the backspace function, you will see that we've used the same block of code there. And we've used it here in the set decimal function again. So why don't we put this block of code in a separate function of its own and in the next part we'll do just that, which will tidy things up a bit. In your set decimal function, go ahead and copy this if else if else block of code. Right below where it says display dot inner HTML is equal to num1 plus operator plus num2. Make sure that you do not delete or forget a bracket here or there. Copy right here before the comment that says end of if. Okay. Now let's declare a function called set op string. And within the function, go ahead and paste this block of code. Now let's call this function from our set decimal function. So comment out the if else if block and call set op string instead. And now come up to the backspace function and here underneath where it says flag is equal to true, you see the same repeating block of code as in the op to string function. And once again, let's comment out this block and call the op to string function, which does precisely the same thing. And let's play around with the calculator to see if this is working. And great, this completes our project. Take a breather to review concepts and go over the code once more before we move on to the next project. In the next function, we will be using two new concepts, the substring method and the strict inequality comparison operator. As I previously mentioned, when we use the string length property, that strings have various methods and properties that we can use, and one of them is the substring method. The substring method takes two arguments. The first argument is a starting index or position, and the second argument is an ending position or index end. Now, what the substring method does is that it will return a subset of the string from the starting index to, but not including the index end. The first character of a string is at index 0. Therefore, the last character of a string has an index which is its length minus 1. And the minus 1 bit is because, remember, we start at the number 0 and not 1.
In case we don't specify the index end in the substring method, it will simply include the rest of the string after the index start. Such as in the third example here, which takes sentence.substring2 and console logs to apple cart is at the right. I suggest you go to JSBin or CodePen and play around with this a bit just to acquaint yourself with the substring method as we will be using it in our backspace function. And one more thing to notice is that the white space in between double quotation marks, that is a string, has a position or index. And now let's have a look at the strict inequality comparison operator. This is the opposite of a strictly equal to operator that we have been using. And this returns true if both of the operands are not equal in value and type. In our example, we see that console log will log to true in the first example as the statement number 3 is not strictly equal to the string 3 is true as they are both of different types. However, in the second statement, console log will log to false as the statement number 3 is not strictly equal to the number 3 is false as they are both the same in value and type. And since we will be using these in our function, let's go ahead and carry on. Before we start our set decimal function, we will be discussing the index of method. So far, we've used the substring method. Now we'll use the index of method. The index of method takes one argument. That is the character in a string that you want to find. What this method does is that it returns the index of the first occurrence of the character or word in the string. Have a look at the example sentence dot index of the word apple. And this will return three as between my and the word apple, there are three positions, m at position zero, y at position one, and the space at position two. The thing to notice here is sentence dot index of the character z, which returns a minus one. When the index of method cannot find the specified argument, it will return minus one. And with this, let's go ahead and use this in our set decimal function. And that's all for the first project in our series. In this project, we coded functions to make a static HTML and CSS design of a calculator into a functioning single operation calculator. The basic takeaway from this project is to learn how to think sequentially in a flowchart-like manner. And with that, now let's move on to the next project in the series.